most highly. If if your skill, you know, and I know, in the IT world, if you're out, what, six months, you're irrelevant. It changes so quickly that if you don't have the skills, you're not going to find a job. So you must go back and get retraining. You must get certified. You must find new ways to update your skills. I, I know this is a hard lesson to hear, but if you are out for six months a year without being retrained, without upping your skills, you're not going to be marketable. So at any age, you must go back and get retrained and find and go find some trade and technical schools, find some certifications. Um, possibly Paul and maybe even Don will be able to talk about some of the types of certifications that maybe employers are looking for today that maybe would be easy to go back and get in a six or nine month program. Uh, in the tech world, if you're not relevant, you're just not marketable. So that's the hard reality of, of going back and getting retrained. You must. And there are trade and technical schools, there are colleges, there are WEA funds. There's tons of programs where they'll pay for education. They will, um, there's state and federal funds. There's less every day, but there are state and federal funds that will pay for 8, 10, 12, 14 month programs. So please take a look at those. Yeah. I agree. Just to piggyback on that, <clears throat> I think it's important when you're in a technical role not to stay stagnant, but to look in where is the technology heading. So um, I don't get content in the current role that I'm in. So I need to retrain with where the industry is going so that, in fact, I lose my job. I'm not going to have a six month, a year long layoff. I'll transition easier because I've, I've been, got the skills for where the wireless industry is trending or where um, application development is going and cloud computing. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't lose a step by staying in that role. So just staying on that wave and uh, trying to continue your your education, it shouldn't stop as far as technology is concerned. If you remember at the beginning of the evening, we said that this event was a little bit different, that instead of being focused on how to find a job, it was about the state of the tech IT industry in Chicago and kind of in the world. And you've got to connect the dots yourself. What do I need to be relevant in those fields, in those disciplines, in those companies? And that's not something that you can do by throwing a resume into an open job. When Sharon is talking about personal brand, it's something that JVS feels very, very strongly about. You know, I come from advertising and marketing for many years. Does anybody know how many dollars are spent a year in the U.S. in marketing everything? Marketing, advertising, promotions, branding, whatever it is. Anybody want to take a guess? You're close. $814 billion. So does advertising work? Does marketing work? Does career work? <coughs> looking at yourself as a brand, how do you sell your brand? Rich just did a great job of selling Salesforce. That's a brand. If I throw out the word Kmart to you, if I throw out the word Nordstrom's, you instinctively have do a snap decision, a snap judgment on what those two brands are. Who are you as a brand? What are you selling? So when you ask me, how do I get a job in this industry, who are you? It's not about you. It's about the company. And the biggest mistake, I'm sorry to be doing my, my, my career counseling kind of thing, but the biggest mistake that we see job, <coughs> seekers, job seekers make is they think it's about them. You guys think it's about you when you go in an interview when you're looking for a job. It's not about you. It's about the company. And so when you go and sell your skills, we already know. By the time a resume comes to an interview, by the time you get an interview, by the time a hiring manager decides to bring you in, they already know you could probably do the job. Because they're not going to bring you in, so you already got an A. So if you're not getting an interview, either your skill set is wrong, your resume stinks, something is missing. If you're getting interviews and you're not closing the deal, then you're not selling yourself. So there is a whole technique to being successful in a job search today that has little to do with your resume, that has little to do with, um, it's all about the personal brand. So I have to piggyback on top of that. It's all about your brand. $814 billion a year, advertising works. Volvos, Toyotas, Cadillacs, Jeeps. What's your instantaneous reaction? Smart cars, electric cars. Don't you make an instantaneous leap what you think about the people that drive them, what they're about, who they are. That's the same thing about you guys. You're a brand. How do you sell yourself? If you can't sell yourself and tell Paul or Rich what you can do for the company and what you bring to the party, 
and how you can solve their problem, you're not going to be successful. How many of you guys saw Music Man? Remember the old music, movie Music Man? Do you remember the premise of it? Professor Harold Hill comes into town and he wants to sell band instruments, but he doesn't go around saying, want to buy a flute. He walks around and identifies a problem. And then his product solves the problem, offers a solution to it. It's the old IBM sales training technique. You don't sell a product, you solve a problem. You are a product. How are you going to solve a problem in an employer's world? And if you can answer that question, and I, you know, I know that, well, I said this earlier, I look around the room, there's a lot of seasoned professionals here, and we know what that's code for a lot of times. We're old. Well, it's not about age, it's about relevance. And it's about how you present yourself and how you keep your skills up. And if you don't do that, you, I, I hate to be tough about it, but you're going to be irrelevant and you're not going to be marketable. So start thinking about yourself as a personal brand and start thinking about, if you were a brand, what would you be selling? And what would people think about the brand? And branding is everything. It's your image, it's your, it's your hair, it's your makeup, it's your, it's your marketing materials, your resume, your cover letters, your, network, your elevator speech. Lots of things go into making a personal brand, not just the haircut you got. But guys, if you've got glasses from 1972, change it. Women, if you've had the same haircut for 35 years, take a chance. I just cut mine off. I feel 10 years younger. <clears throat> But it, it, this is stuff, that, that it should be irrelevant, but it's not. So all of this stuff, the soft skills, is probably number one. As a hiring manager, if I have two people before me, and this person has better skills, but this person, I want to be around eight hours a day, I'm going to choose the person I want to be around eight hours a day, and I don't care about how great this other person's skills are. So we do a whole workshop on building a personal brand, which you can go to our website and take a look at. They're free for job seekers. So. Sorry, thanks, Sharon. No, I, I think it's wonderful uh, uh, that your organization does do that because I think that's something that we continually coach internally within the organization that you don't stop building your brand just because you're just your job seeker. You should always kind of keep your networks. Hopefully, that gives you a little bit of insight. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, you. Thank you. It is a different world out there, and it's not just a different world in terms of the cloud and mobile and. And, and the way tech has, has influenced our lives, it's really influenced the way we look for a job today as well. And so if you can connect the dots between what's being said here today and the way you look for a job, you're gonna be more successful. Because throwing a resume to an online job board is not a job search. And I think the, all of us at JVS have come to realize that one of the reasons people are unsuccessful in their job search is they don't know how to do it. It's not that you don't have the skills or the resumes or even the contacts. Nobody knows how to do a job search anymore. Years ago, we used to pick up the phone and mail in a resume. And sending a resume to an online job board is just the same as mailing in a resume, guys. So you, what we're hoping that you get out of tonight, too, is it's not just a different tech world. It's a different way to find a job within any world using technology. Part of it is knowing who you are and what makes you happy and what type of environment and culture you want to work in and what type of job within the IT world. So you really have to do your research and you have to explore. You know, start with targeting companies as opposed to looking at jobs. So research the companies first. Research the industry, the company, and then the jobs. Print stuff out. Look at it. Live with it. Try it on like a pair of shoes. But you must do your research. Um, and, and there's really no other way of, of doing it other than knowing yourself, knowing where you're comfortable, and, and understanding what the IT world offers in the tech world. Because as Don said, IT is in every single part of our lives today. So regardless of, you want to work in a, you know, in a financial banking world, you can do it. You want to work in an advertising agency or a television station, you can do it. There, there's no place that IT doesn't exist, so maybe you want to take a look at the culture and the organization first and then see how you fit into that and then figure out what IT jobs are available and what, uh, what discipline and what training you need.